The Sor Revolution, Persian, Anklab Thwur or Thwur literally Seventh Sor, Pashto, D. Thwur Anklab also called the April Revolution or April Coup, was a coup d'état or self-proclaimed revolution led by the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan PDPA against the rule of Afghan President Muhammad Daud Khan on 27-28 April 1978. Daud Khan and most of his family were killed at the presidential palace. The revolution resulted in the creation of a government with Nur Muhammad Taraki as president, general secretary of the Revolutionary Council, and was the precursor to the 1979 intervention by the Soviets and the 1979 to 1989 Soviet Afghan war against the Mujahideen. Sor, pronounced like sour in English, is the Dari Persian name of the second month of the Persian calendar, the month in which the uprising took place. At a press conference in New York in June 1978, Minister of Foreign Affairs Hafizullah Amin, a member of the coup, said that the event was not a coup but a revolution by the will of the people. Topic. Background With the support and assistance of minority political party People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan PDPA, Mohammad Daud Khan had taken power in the 1973 Afghan coup d'état by overthrowing the monarchy of King Zahir Shah, and had established the First Republic of Afghanistan. President Daud was convinced that closer ties and military support from the Soviet Union would allow him to settle the border issues with Pakistan. However Daud, who was ostensibly committed to a policy of non-alignment, became uneasy over Soviet attempts to dictate Afghanistan's foreign policy, and relations between the two countries deteriorated. Under the secular government of Daud, factionalism and rivalry developed in the PDPA, with two main factions being the Parcham and Kalk factions. On 17 April 1978, a prominent member of the Parcham, Mir Akbar Khyber, was murdered. Although the government issued a statement deploring the assassination, Nur Muhammad Taraki of the PDPA charged that the government itself was responsible, a belief that was shared by much of the Kabul intelligentsia. PDPA leaders apparently feared that Daud was planning to eliminate them. During the funeral ceremonies for Khyber, a protest against the government occurred, and shortly thereafter, most of the leaders of PDPA, including Babrak Karmal, were arrested by the government. Hafizullah Amin, however, was put under house arrest. This gave him a chance to order an uprising, one that had been slowly coalescing for more than two years. Amin, without having the authority, instructed the Kalki army officers to overthrow the government. The revolution According to an eyewitness, the first signs of the impending coup in Kabul, about noon on 27 April were reports of a tank column headed toward the city, smoke of unknown origin near the Ministry of Defense, and armed men, some in military uniform and others not, guarding Ariana Circle, a major intersection. The first shots heard were near the Ministry of Interior in the new city Sherinau section of Kabul where a company of policemen apparently confronted an advancing tank column. From there the fighting spread to other areas of the city. Later, that afternoon, the first fighter planes, Suhoi Su-7s, came in low and fired rockets at the National Palace in the center of the city. In early evening, an announcement was broadcast on government-owned Radio Afghanistan that the Kalk were overthrowing the Daud government. The use of the word Kalk, and its traditional association with the communists in Afghanistan, made clear that the PDPA was leading the coup, and also that the rebels had captured the radio station. The aerial attacks on the palace intensified about midnight as six Su-7s made repeated rocket attacks, lighting up the city. The next morning, 28 April, Kabul was mostly quiet, although the sound of gunfire could still be heard on the southern side of the city. As the people of Kabul ventured out of their homes they realized that the rebels were in complete control of the city and learned that President Daud and his brother Naim had been killed early that morning. A group of soldiers had surrounded the heavily damaged palace and demanded their surrender. Instead, Daud and Naim, pistols in hand, charged out of the palace at the soldiers, and were shot and killed. Topic. Government after the revolution The revolution was initially welcomed by many people in Kabul, who were dissatisfied with Daud government. The PDPA, divided between the Kalk and Parcham, succeeded the Daud government with a new regime under the leadership of Nur Muhammad Taraki of the Kalk faction. 
In Kabul, the initial cabinet appeared to be carefully constructed to alternate ranking positions between Kalki and Parchamas. Taraki was Prime Minister, Carmel was Senior Deputy Prime Minister, and Hafizullah Amin was Foreign Minister. The unity, however, between Kalk and Parcham lasted only briefly. Taraki and Amin in early July relieved most of the Parchamas from their government positions. Carmel was sent abroad as ambassador to Czechoslovakia. In August 1978, Taraki and Amin uncovered a plot and executed or imprisoned several cabinet members, including the military leader of the Soar Revolution, General Abdul Qadir. In September 1979, it was Taraki's turn to become a victim of the revolution. Amin overthrew and executed him. Once in power, the PDPA implemented a socialist agenda. It changed the national flag from traditional Islamic green color to a near copy of the red flag of the Soviet Union, a provocative affront to the people of this conservative Islamic country. It prohibited usury, without having in place any alternative for peasants who relied on the traditional, if exploitative, credit system in the countryside. That led to an agricultural crisis and a fall in agricultural production. Land reform was criticized by one journalist as confiscating land in a haphazard manner that enraged everyone, benefited no one, and reduced food production, and first instance of organized, nationwide repression in Afghanistan's modern history. <laughs> <laughs> Women's rights The PDPA, an advocate of equal rights for women, declared the equality of the sexes. The PDPA made a number of statements on women's rights, declaring equality of the sexes and introduced women to political life. A prominent example was Anahita Radabzad, who was a major Marxist leader and a member of the Revolutionary Council. Radabzad wrote the famous May 28, 1978 New Kabul Times editorial, which declared, Privileges which women, by right, must have are equal education, job security, health services, and free time to rear a healthy generation for building the future of the country. Educating and enlightening women is now the subject of close government attention. Women were already guaranteed freedoms under the 1964 Constitution, but the PDPA went further by declaring full equality. Human rights The revolution also introduced severe repression of a kind previously unknown in Afghanistan. According to journalist Robert D. Kaplan, while Afghanistan had historically been extremely poor and underdeveloped, it had never known very much political repression until 1978. The soldiers' knock on the door in the middle of the night, so common in many Arab and African countries, was little known in Afghanistan, where a central government simply lacked the power to enforce its will outside of Kabul. Taraki's coup changed all that. Between April 1978 and the Soviet invasion of December 1979, Afghan communists executed 27,000 political prisoners at the sprawling Puli Charki prison six miles east of Kabul. Many of the victims were village mullahs and headmen who were obstructing the modernization and secularization of the intensely religious Afghan countryside. By Western standards, this was a salutary idea in the abstract. But it was carried out in such a violent way that it alarmed even the Soviets. Kaplan states that it was the Soar Revolution and its harsh land reform program, rather than the December 1979 Soviet invasion, as most people in the West suppose, that ignited the Mujahedin revolt against the Kabul authorities and prompted the refugee exodus to Pakistan. Topic. Legacy The Khalki regime pushed hard for socialist reforms and was brutal in its repression of opposition. Discontent fomented amongst the people of Afghanistan, and after several uprisings the following year, March in the town of Herat, June in the Chindawal district of Kabul, August at the fortress of Bala Hisar. Troops from the USSR entered Afghanistan in December 1979, citing the Brezhnev Doctrine as basis for their intervention. Insurgent groups fought Soviet troops and the PDPA government for more than nine years until the final withdrawal of Soviet troops from Afghanistan in February 1989. Instability remained in Afghanistan, with war continuing to plague the country for more than four decades after the revolution. 
In 1991, PDPA member Babrak Carmel from the moderate Parcham faction denounced the revolution, saying, It was the greatest crime against the people of Afghanistan. Parcham's leaders were against armed actions because the country was not ready for a revolution. I knew that people would not support us if we decided to keep power without such support. Topic. See also Hakikat e Inqilab e Sor, a newspaper named after the Sor Revolution. Afghanistan Soviet Union relations. Topic. References. Topic. External links. Surviving the 1978 Revolution in Afghanistan, a personal account of American Larry Clinton Thompson's experiences in the Soar Revolution. How I Escaped from Jail in Afghanistan by Ismail Sloan, another personal account of an American who traveled to Afghanistan to rescue assets shortly after the revolution and during Dodd Khan's short-lived government.